My name is Aubrey Muchella from the city of Johannesburg. I'm currently responsible for information uh, technology at the city um, and also um, looking at the architecture of the smart city in ICT uh, within the smart city program. The city of Johannesburg is in the center of uh, South Africa um, and um, South Africa has a population of about 50 million plus and uh, the city we're sitting at about 4.9 million. We experience an influx of people coming into Johannesburg on a monthly basis between 3,000 and 6,000 a month. Um, we have a very diverse um, you know, community set up where we have extremely poor people and we've got extremely rich people and people in between. And our services are also catered to address uh, this diversity. If you look at the traditional way of doing things, you are limited by time and space. And when you start talking about smart city, you find that there's digitization that comes into the equation, where with digital uh, platforms, you are able to you know, narrow that, that divide. And you are able to also address you know, from the poor to the extremely rich, giving them a service, therefore creating you know, the digital divide separate, you, you know, that separates the community. You can be able to narrow it down. And we have seen this coming to life when we start adopting the smart city initiatives. There are a lot of uh, value that we have seen in case studies that we have explored for other areas. And the case study that is very relevant for the city of Johannesburg is that of New York, where they looking at where they had actually consolidated the, their different utilities and services into one you know, city. And we, we're looking at that as well. And we think the smart city you know, approach will actually make it easier for us to implement such. The smart city solutions have revolutionized how we do business as the city. Um, you, traditionally, you will get people coming to the city physically, engaging with us to experience the service. Uh, with the use of smart uh, technology solutions, we are able to implement things like uh, you know, smart meters. Uh, we've brought in mobility solutions that helps with customer engagement. Uh, we've brought in smart parks. Uh, we've brought in things like uh, Wi-Fi to, you know, to the public where you have um, open bandwidth that you can use for uh, engaging in business, looking for jobs, um, getting e-learning services and so forth. Uh, the other one which is very powerful is actually what we have done in the e-health space or in the health space. Uh, we've got you know, the e-health solutions that enables us to have record of the employee digitally and that can expand to so many other services. Very beautiful project that we can actually um, hold high in the smart, uh, smart meter rollout and the Wi-Fi because they're interlinked. You know, the smart meter uses Wi-Fi to actually uh, deliver the services. So we've rolled out this Wi-Fi technology throughout uh, the city nodes that have been identified and uh, we've seen a lot of adoption from the public and uh, a lot of people embracing this technology. But linked to that with the smart, uh, smart meters, we've seen a lot of people where they are able to actually engage with us positively. Issues of uh, complaints around the bill has reduced. Um, you, you can actually see people have ability to access their bill and they can actually see how much consumption have they experienced and so forth. Uh, one casing point is when we experienced load shedding. Uh, the city of Johannesburg took the initiative to implement something called load limiting to prevent the outages by just reducing the volume of electricity that a end person will receive. And that became a very interesting project that actually uh, made the city of Johannesburg not to experience load shedding in the previous year. So th that's, those are the kind of things that we've experienced. But on the negative side, the biggest challenge is when communities are involved. You have to roll out smart city projects at a vast scale of you know, uh, geographical uh, dispersed areas. And when you engage with the community, sometimes they reject those services. So in order to make sure that you know, these things are done, you need to bring in the design thinking into equation, where the customer or the you know, community is actually entrenched in that. You need to learn the community. You need to make them part of the solution they have to embrace the solution. When implementing the smart city solution, it's very key to get the backing of the uh, shareholders or your stakeholders or your political investors. 
So you need to have that in check. Um, the second thing is that you need to make sure that you use that political backing to engage the communities and address the community solutions. When you de design the solution, it, you must make sure that it talks to what the communities are comfortable with and it makes their lives easy uh, uh, without actually breaking the bank. Uh, those are very key, critical issues that you have to address. Then you have to then go into the layer of saying, how do you fund this project? It's not easy to fund the project as the city. You have to get into a triple P, a public-private partnership. That triple P will encourage you to actually engage the citizens while engaging the business side of the city and making sure the project becomes a success and you can realize the value quickly.